Hi, this is Pastor Gary, and I want to welcome you to Wednesday's Word. Tonight, we're going to be in Psalms 46. Uh, but before we go into Psalms 46 and really dive deep into to what the psalmist wrote, uh, I'd like to take this time and opportunity to just pray and, and lift up our healthcare workers. Uh, it's really uh, heavy on my heart. Uh, we have healthcare workers in, in our congregation, uh, Jane Gutierrez, Giovanna Pritchett, uh, Col Cora Colburn, uh, my sister-in-law Erica. Uh, Sorry, is a uh, nurse in Amarillo, and and I'm sure I'm forgetting some some people. But if if you know of a healthcare worker or a nurse or any of the frontline people that that are really keeping us safe, uh, I would just ask that you just uh, let's go to come together and and just uh, lift them up. Uh, get, we're going to pray again at the at the end of of this message. Uh, but you can never pray too much. And besides, you know, they need the prayer. We need the practice. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we just come to you right now, Father. Father, I do pray for the nurses and the doctors and, and our, you know, the first responders, Father, uh, EMT, firefighters, police, Father, all those that are keeping us safe at this time, Father. Father, I pray for their safety, Father. I pray for their family's safety, Father. Father, I'm sure they're spending more and more time away from home, Father, but I pray that you allow them to go home safely, Father. I pray hedge of protection around them, Father. I ask that you keep them safe, Father. It's in your precious name we pray. Amen. All right, so we're going to be in Psalms 46. So go ahead and open your Bible and go to uh, Psalms 46, and, and I'll give you a, a couple seconds to get to that. We're going to move throughout the, the Bible. We're going to be in a couple of Psalms, and then we're going to be in Romans and Lamentations. And so uh, just be ready to move. So you better have some fast fingers tonight. And, and so, uh, and. And with Psalms 46, I want to talk about stress and stress in our lives. And in, in 2016, the American uh, Psychological Association, um, they did a stress in America survey. Now, this is based on data from 2016. So in four years, I'm sure there's been some change, but some things are still consistent, right? Um, and, and what they found out was that on a scale of 10, so one being the lowest, 10 being the highest, that most Americans, their level of stress was at a 4.9. Most common issues of stress are, are, are uh, where stress sources, you know, these stress sources were from money, work, the economy, family responsibilities, and health concerns. Now, with, with everything that's going on, I'm sure, again, that number is higher, uh, but that's a pretty good statistic, right? Four years ago, 4.9. Um, and, and so I don't think much has changed uh, with that. And so that's that's a lot of stress. And and what they determined was the more stress that you have, the more chance, the, the, the higher chances of you becoming sick. Uh, you had a greater chance. And so that's what they found out. And that logic is sound. I mean, with stress uh, makes you, you know, your body react different ways. And so you get sick now. In 2000, or, I'm sorry, in 1967, these two psychiatrists made a study, and they had this study, and in the study, they were over. They studied over 5,000 medical patients, and they charted 43 of the most stressful life events that a person can experience, and and from that, they gave it, they assigned it a numerical setting, and this rating was called life change units or LCUs, life change units. And so hold on to that because we're going to refer back to that quite a bit throughout the, this message. Uh, and, and so the higher the stress, the higher the LCU, the lower the stress, the lower the LCU. For example, death of a spouse, 100 LCU. That was the max. That's the highest. 100 is the, the, the highest level of LCU. And so the death, death of a spouse was at 100. A divorce was second at 73 LCU. Being pregnant uh, is 40 LCU. Uh, and remodeling a home or any DY, you know, do it yourself type of thing, 25 LCU. Now, in my household, thinking about doing something in my home, doing any type of, of remodeling or do it yourself, just talking about it gives me 25 LCUs only because it's not a standalone because LCU, uh, 25 LCUs for thinking about remodeling, then actually remodeling or, or doing it yourself, fixer upper type of thing that could potentially lead to a divorce. So that's 73. And then one of us probably not going to make it. So that's a hundred right there for loss of a spouse. And so if you don't ever see me again, my wife did it. So these are all kinds of stress in our lives, work-related stress, home stress, 
simply stress and the simple stress of our lives that we go through in everyday life. In one year, if you've experienced over 300 LCUs, they determined that you had an over an 80% chance of becoming ill. Again, the more stress, the more you became sick. The less stress, the less you became sick. Again, that logic is sound. They concluded that if we experience that many LCUs in one year, a person will experience either a physical, mental, or emotional breakdown. And those are real things. The, you know, those are real feelings, real stress, and real reactions to stress. The higher your LCU score, the harder you have to work to get yourself back into a good state of health. And so that becomes your new normal. It's not, you know, you're not, you have a new standard of what good health is because of the elevated stress in your life. We just can't cope with that much stress. And so you have to exert more energy. You have, you know, your, your brain's working more, your body's working more. And so, because there's so many demands in our lives that we end up what ends up happening happening for many of us is we end up burning the candle at both ends. We start believing that stress stress is the new normal, that uh, we have to try to solve all of our problems, but we solve our problems on human terms. We try to work it out on our own. We try to save ourselves without realizing that we can't do anything on our, by ourselves. We can't do anything for ourselves. It is our trust in the Lord and faith in the Lord that makes all the difference in how we handle stress in our lives. So let's go ahead and look at, at Psalms 46. Now in this Psalm, it reminds us that God is the one we need to look at during difficult times in our lives and lean on. And so we're really going to chunk this, uh, this Psalms up into three parts. So let's look at verses uh, one through three, and let's read this together. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, and th though the mountains slip into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains quake at its swelling pride. Now, that's a grim picture, right? I mean, all these natural disasters, these storms, the world is being swept away. Those are just the storms caused by nature. That's not even the storms that we experience in our own lives. You know, it's a great reminder at the very beginning, the psalmist starts off with, with, this, with these simple words, God is. And those two words are very powerful. God is. It's not God is maybe, or God might, or God might possibly. There's no hint of doubt. You see, it's simple. God is. He's our refuge and our strength. He's there in the midst of our, of our troubles, in the midst of our storms, in the midst of whatever's going on in our life with all this stress that's going on. He is there. He is present. It doesn't matter how it happened or why it happened. God is there. He's ready to help us in the midst of all these storms. God promises to hide us in his shelter. He can help us by his strength because he is also a very present. He is also a very present help in trouble. That word very means he helps abundantly and greatly right now in our current situation. He is always available and always accessible. You know, Psalms 9, 9 says this, that the Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble, because God is our refuge and strength. It doesn't matter if the if the world give way, gives way. It doesn't matter if the mountains sink into the ocean. It doesn't matter if the water rises or the, and overtakes us. It doesn't matter if, if all these things in our lives uh, come crashing down God is. God is our strength. God is our refuge. He is there. All these things are temporal. Yes, does it stress us out that that we might that, that people are getting laid off? Absolutely. Does it stress us out that all these things are going on? Absolutely, because they impact your day. But what we we have to look at from the Christian standpoint and from the Christian perspective is that God is there and He is present. And wherever He puts you, wherever He sends you, wherever He has you. He is there with you. When there's trouble, I always know that I can count on him. He is the one constant in our lives. God promises to shelter us and, and when we seek him. Let's, let's go on to the next one, uh, verses four through seven. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of gold, the holy dwelling places of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She will not be moved. 
God will help her when morning dawns. The nations made an uproar. The kingdoms tottered. He raised his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. You see, God's grace flows like a river to bring gladness and joy to his people. And we are his people. While the oceans rage and foam, the God's presence is depicted as a calm and gently flowing stream. Think about the life change units, right? The LCUs and all those things that are taking place. When we consider our world today in our in its current reality, you know, nations are in uproar, economies and are, 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 you know, closing down and shutting down. There's unrest, the market's up and down, people are losing their jobs. People are losing their lives and, and, and there's lasting impact when people lose their lives. And I'm not minimizing that because, you know, there might be only so many deaths, but to that person and to that family uh, that, that is experienced, death and the experiencing death within their family that's a lot and so we got to lift them up as well that that family that has to deal with that but even with that stress god is present with them with all that's going on right now no matter how bad things get god's presence means he will help us when we take control of our thoughts and focus on God, we experience hope. You know, Jeremiah, Jeremiah experienced this hope in Lamentations 3, through 23, when he says, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. See, God is faithful to us. We will never, he will never leave us nor forsake us. Romans 8, 39, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. God is with us. Amen. Now get this. This one's free. I'm not even going to charge you for this. It goes the, the God of Jacob, right? And so Jacob was known as a de deceiver he, with a twisted mind and heart. We have a lot in common with Jacob. You know, even, even though Jacob had, had lots of faults, God stuck with him, shaping him, molding him into the man of faith, changing his name to Israel, which means Prince of God. Aren't you glad God takes selfish sinners like you and me and changes us from the inside out? Okay, getting back to Psalms 46. So let's go to verses 8 through 11. Come, come. Behold, the works of the Lord, who has wrought desolations in the earth. He makes wars to cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariots with fires. Cease striving and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold we're always busy, right? I mean, there, there's not a time that we're not busy in our lives. There's always something going on. There's always somewhere to be, something to do, another project. All these stresses and, and, and just living life pulls us in so many directions. And that list never ends. One thing that has been a blessing in, in all this that's going down with, with the, the shutdown and the stay-at-home orders and, and with that, that all came with COVID-19 is that it's caused people to stop. And that is what, that's what the psalmist is saying, is telling us right here, is to stop, to be still and know that God is God and we are not. We must stop. We are to cease fighting a battle we can't win. It's almost like a picture, right, of you, of us, with our hands clenched in, in balls, uh, with, with, you know, and, 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 and then letting them go knowing that we can't do anything and, and giving it all to God. Leave those matters to God. The purpose of being still is, is so that we can know God. Now, it's one thing to know about him. And, and, and so the word know means to acknowledge and comprehend, to discover intimately, right? It's not enough to know about him. It's to know him, to have a relationship with him. But we can't we can't know God until we become still before him. We have to stop worrying, working on our own self-effort to try to fix ourselves and fully submit to God. To stop and reflect and consider all 
his power and presence in our lives. How well are you experiencing the power and presence of God in your life right now? Have you taken the time to stop and to be still? Even in the midst of all that's going on of these raging storms and, and only you know where you are. But have you stopped so that you can place your trust fully on Christ? If you don't, then you will always be going around in, in this hurry up mode and never experience the true power that is available to us from God. God is always near, always available to us. Now, if anybody out there has ever experienced being on hold, right? Hold on the phone or hold in line at the store or at the bank or, you know, just in, in this state of being on hold, with it's, it's the elevator music, it's the hold music, right? And, and that becomes annoying and, and you're just becoming more frustrated. God is not like that. God does not put us on hold. He is always available. It doesn't matter what your problems are. Whether they're big or small, God wants to bring you healing and help. So stop and be still and speak to him, talk to him. But there's a second part to that, right? When you speak to him and talk to him, be ready to listen to him. God's power is greater than anything in this world, greater than the storms in our lives. God's power is sufficient to win the victory over all of our enemies that come in our way. So don't be afraid to ask him for help. Have you felt like there are too many stresses, too many LCUs in your life, and that you're just ready to, to, to explode? God's help is available. And all you have to do is stop running and turn to God and grab hold of him. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, I just hope that this is helpful to you during this time of stress. And, and I would encourage you to reach out to, to our church. And if, if you're not a part of Believers Fellowship, you still call us. Uh, you can reach us via Facebook or our, our number, um, email us, but reach out to somebody because know that we know that we love you and God loves you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, I just thank you for your grace and your mercy, Father. I thank you for the reminders, Father, that we aren't as Christians doing this on our own, Father, that you are with us and you are standing with us, Father. Father, I thank you for that promise. I thank you for the commitment, Father. Father, I thank you just for, for the church body, Father, and not the building, but the people, Father, that continue to remain steadfast, Father, knowing that you are in control, Father. Father, I pray for our country. I pray for our leaders, our world leaders, Father that they too stop and be still and hear from you, Father, and listen to you, Father. Father, I pray for wisdom and discernment for them, Father. I pray for their safety as well, Father. I thank you for all you do in our lives. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, church, it, it's, it's always a privilege to be able to share God's word with you, and I can't wait for the time that we're able to, to join together and corporately worship and, and just uh, praise God together. Um, in a more intimate setting where we're able to be together and, 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 and share our stories and our testimonies of what this has allowed us to do, how God has moved in each of our lives. And so I'd ask that you pray uh, of what, what that looks like, when, when, when that will happen, uh, as, as we as pastors continue to pray when to come back and corporately worship uh, at, at an in-house service. Um, also, our, we have care callers calling at both campuses, uh, members and regular attenders. And, and, and so uh, this will be the second round. And so two things I would ask that uh, if they leave a message, call back. Uh, and we just want to know how you're doing and, and to check on you if you have any needs, if there's anything we could pray for you about. Because uh, it's always a blessing and an honor and a privilege to be able to lift people up uh, to the Lord and stand with them as we lift these petitions up. Also, if you have not or have uh, yet to receive a phone call from the first round, which was a couple of weeks ago, or, or this round as, as we get ready to make these calls, uh, contact the church so that we, we might not have your updated uh, contact information, uh, which has happened a couple of times. Uh, so contact the church if we don't have your information, and we'll be sure to reach out so that we can reach out to you now and in the future. Uh, I ask that uh, you, if you continue to reach out to each other if everyone reaches someone. Uh, again, I can't wait to see you. Uh, I love you. Thank you for just uh, your support and prayers as well. And look forward to, to seeing you on Sunday uh, on Facebook. God bless.